Let's get to the Cop City attack in Atlanta. The Attorney General of Georgia, Chris Carr, joined our program yesterday. He said the only suspect who was granted bail was a lawyer for the Southern Poverty Law Center. Jason Rance is all over this story. He's been following it forever. Jason, who is, who are, the National Lawyers Guild and the Southern Poverty Law Center? Because they are involved in this. Who are they? They are. So both groups are separate, but they work effectively for the same purpose. They're both progressive groups. When we're talking about the lawyers, they coordinate with these various activists. They show up alongside them with the intent of helping them, with the intent of going after the police. So when someone from an Antifa side or other agitator groups end up getting violent. Well, guess what happens? You've got the lawyers there who are ready to defend the folks, pretend that what they did first wasn't actually violent. Usually they place the blame on the heavy handed tactics of the police. You will notice when you go back and you look at any of their involvement, they will always defend the violent people and they will always make the exact same claims about the police and the heavy handed response as if you're not supposed to make arrests or be heavy handed when a Molotov cocktail is lobbed at your head. Now, when it comes to the Southern Poverty Law Center, this is a group that has been mainstreamed by a lot of left wing media. They go ahead and through a social justice lens, they will determine and claim which groups or individuals are white supremacists or are right wing extremist groups. They side with extremist groups. They don't acknowledge that Antifa exists. They do not acknowledge the violence that comes from left wing organizations because their goal is simply to go after the right. And unfortunately, a lot of media outlets give them that power. And frankly, a lot of politicians do as well. Was this group connected to Antifa? It, it, we don't know. So there are individuals who certainly acted out as if they were Antifa. You look for certain kinds of clues, which include the way that they dress. In this case, it was in black block. The kinds of weapons they use, like Molotov cocktails. The fact is that they didn't come, with the exception of two, from Georgia. They came from out of state, in a couple cases, out of the country. And so there are the telltale signs of Antifa. Remember, as an organization, it's not like they have like a, a, a national Antifa group. And what ends up happening is you've got the like-minded people who connect with each other they organize on social media and they self-proclaim themselves as anti-fascists and if you were to have like a Venn diagram of all these different groups and all these different causes you've got the environmentalist extremists on one hand you've got Antifa here and in the middle you've got shared sort of ownership of, of both sides got it an advocacy group an advocacy group i should say is warning a new bill in washington state that's your area would criminalize free speech the group argues it would lead to an orwellian minister of truth some people have free speech others will not wait a minute jason what's in this bill that criminalizes free speech so the bill in particular basically says we're going to create this commission that will look at extremist language, not extremist action. The intent is to go after speech before it gets to the point where someone becomes a right wing extremist. And I specifically say right wing because they're not looking for left wing organizations. They're complaining that there is a tie to white supremacy for folks who are anti mask, who are anti vaccine, who are anti government, who speak out against the gender ideology that pretends there are like 17,000 different genders. Here's some good news. That bill late last night is dead hmm. for now. It can come back because this is one of the pet projects coming from the attorney general's office. He's been pushing this. They've spent a lot of money doing research into what they say will be a public health response to right wing extremism. But here, here's the, the clue. When you say it's a public health response, why is it under the attorney general's office? You're right. They're seeking to go after speech and they don't hide that. Got it. Jason Rance, always good on the point. Thank you very much, Jason. We will see you again soon. Got Thanks, it. Stuart.